All right, let's do some, let's do some Shuri. Oh, did I not check my thing last night? I must not have. I guess, I guess I, I was an old man and I was asleep last night before this rolled over, huh? Still, still no Dami Mami Angela though. Never, never once a Dami Mami Angela. You opened Teenage Warhead Galactus and Master Mold. Yeah, I've opened, I've opened done. Almost, we're almost collection level 20,000. We'll get one eventually, right? We'll get one eventually. Is there a new card tomorrow? Yep, every Tuesday. Tomorrow is Stay Gron. Why would Brode give you an S5 card for three when he knows you'll buy one? That's true, you know. I'm in the wrong scene, chat. I'm in the wrong scene. It's Monday. <laughs> All right, Shuri into Typhoid here is probably real solid, huh? Do we snap on that? I'm gonna snap on that. I think 21 is probably enough to win Asgard here. Hey, Lady Macbeth, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate the support. You find the collection sheet that we made. Find the up latest version of that here. How are we winning a second location this game? <clears throat> What if I do this and then next turn, if we draw Taskmaster, we can go Sentry Taskmaster. Is that right? Well, seven, eight. No, we're not quite enough. We need nine for that. I guess doing this lets me go these three together, which is 16 here. It's not terrible. <sighs> Is that enough? That might be. This local man about to get Shang Chi'd. Ooh! Did we get him with the three cards? Oh no, we're gonna Viper the Enchantress! Fuck! <laughs> ah, rip. Oh my god! And we, well, the Sentry doesn't matter at least. What a disaster. Need a, need a priority there, huh? they don't play for Sokovia. Yeah, maybe. Hey, what's going on, Small? Six for the third of a year. Camping was good over the weekend. <laughs> it was a little bit cold. The kids had the kids had fun. We got down to got down to a little below freezing overnight. Fire was warm though. Chazzy Diamond, thanks for the quarter of a year. Good morning, good morning.
Tent to RV, tent camping. Below freezing where I'm from the Midwest. Yondu Lizard, so probably Galactus, right? If I had to venture a guess. I'm gonna Sentry mid. Oh, they're not Galactus, interesting. So I'm gonna Sentry mid because I wanna be able to Viper this across to disrupt the Galactus, but it's not what they're doing, huh? Huh. I guess we'll do this. There's a good chance our deck is not good, Chip. Let's give it uh, another see. try or two here. Any good variants in my shop? Nope. I think there's only one variant actually in the client that I'm waiting on. I think most of, most of the other variants I'm waiting on are not in the game yet. Yeah, just Angela so far. I check every day and she's never there. Uh, Professor X stays in Luke's bar, right? It's good for us. Snapping because rock slide beans their Zabu. Yeah, well, Professor left here, and then we'll attunement to Taskmaster and Lamentus. <laughs> they could theoretically Moon Girl Luke's bar this turn, but outside of that, I think we're good. Sorry, I said rock slide beads are zombie. Rock slide beads are dark hawk. Ah, rip. <sighs> they had the moon girl. That probably means we're dead. Let's see what else they have going on. But Lamentus is bad for Darkhawk. Yes, Lamentus is bad for Darkhawk. That's why I fucking snapped when it became clear that they were Darkhawk. Was the point of the explanation. Escaped. When it became apparent that they were Darkhawk, we snapped. Because the center location was bad for them. What are my thoughts on M'Baku and Cerebro 2? I think it's worse than the other options. I think you'd rather play one of the disruptive one drops or two drops. Oh, snap. 
Snap Psylocke into, into Sentry, into Viper, into Armor. Solid curve here. What is Enchantress here for? Enchantress does double duty in this deck. Not only is Enchantress a good tech card in the current metagame, but Enchantress gets rid of the detrimental ongoing effect that Typhoid Mary has. I think of Super Scroll in the current metagame. Super Scroll is one of the cards I called out as some of the best tech cards you could be playing in my video at the Thank end of last you. week here. Always, always expect to get a meta update video from me shortly after uh, we see a format change. I think that was Friday I posted the best decks highlight. Hey, a Cosmo on the right here. Hey, Drake, thanks for the prime. Appreciate the support. Well, double send it back to me. No, it just tries to send an additional thing over. They're going to Dr. Octopus me and then Professor X will win the game. What a, what a wonderful gameplay experience. It's really, it's really unfortunate that we have Galactus gameplay for a minimum of another month. That's not a card they could fix via an OTA change. Should have played Professor or Psylocke here so we could uh, spike the Professor. I don't know, this curve is nice. The problem here is, if they're a Doctor Doom deck, we lose the Doctor Doom. All right, Viper, I'm counting on you. All right, Viper. There's my gal. There's my gal. It's just like... Rockwind, thank you for the promise. All right. It's like, we won, but it also wasn't very interesting, right? Like, I didn't outplay my opponent. I just like, yeah. I think Bruce cheated. We split her 11 times, chat. That comes with special privileges. You sure he sentry does the void become minus 20? It does not. The void power is static.
Hey, virtual realism. Thank you for the 32 months. Yandu into invisible woman. Interesting. How good, how good is this enchantress going to be? Hopefully very. Oh, they're just Cerebro too, huh? I think we're dead then. Yandu's a weird one in there, especially the the old Korg Yandu combo. And then unfortunately, this isn't enough to win middle, right? We're going to, is it enough? This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, we're one short. Yeah, our Viper, our Viper did her job. Victory. We're actually losing this game, right? Yeah, I could have. I could have Enchantress into armor, but the Enchantress doesn't hit the blue marble because of the invisible man. So they would have been 10 to our 10, but I would have only been three here to their nine to my three. Enchantress, Enchantress center armor left also loses. We would have gone Rocket Tuba Taskmaster. Yeah, but then they would have had the ability to play a card out, right? I don't know. Maybe that's better because I was deterministically dead, but they could also just leave. New cards. Day. New cards release on Mondays. Or sorry, on Tuesdays. It's only, it's only season pass cards that release on whatever day of the week it currently is. Uh, two more left for now. A little annoying that rickety bridge is there. Hey, make life simple. Thanks for the five months. Appreciate it. Hey, Baker. Thanks for the 16. Good morning. Good morning. Tuma ongoing is not. It's just a static effect. It's about time to be done with this deck. Though. It feels pretty mediocre. Isn't zero good in this deck? So the problem with zero in this deck is that um, you don't. Uh, what's the right search for? The problem with zero in this deck is that you don't have a place on curve to really zero out the things that you're making All bigger, right? Go. It's a real shame. We can't do this, huh? Escaped. 
Thanks, Wabet. For people asking about specifications on cards like a tuba, remember you can always do exclamation point in a card name in chat to pull up the exact card text for something. Zero into Lizard on the aisle angle for sure. Fixed issue is certain card animations crashing the game anytime soon. Uh, I mean, I do not work for Second Dinner, and I'd wager nobody that's chatting in chat works for Second Dinner. If you're looking for tech support or bug fixes, I'd recommend trying official Second Dinner channels. Hey, thanks for the six months, Mike. Welcome back. I'll pull this space stone into the island. Avoid getting some crap kicked across to be here. Crazy that people that started following for Snap stuff have been here for half a year now already. Uh, yes, yes. You're a second dinner employee in chat before. Yeah, certainly. I also assume that even if they were here, they wouldn't want to comment on things like dev timelines they haven't commented on publicly, right? Like, I'd assume we get a public statement before they'd be sharing things in random Twitch chats. Oh, we could fill them with Titania and then move Jeff. Yeah, that's the better line. Hey, Hobby. Thanks for sticking around. Welcome back. Guess I'm playing these here. They can't they can't Professor X the Island to silence. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm supposed to move Jess Jeff in case I draw Miles next turn. That's probably the case. impressions do I have for Stegron? I assume it's a card that's going to be a format staple. Yeah, thoroughly punished for not moving anything, huh?
This plays for every location, right? Gives me eight to seven. It puts me ahead here. And if they play one thing here, Titania jumps to my side and I'm ahead here as well. Yeah, I guess there's no reason not to put this here, right? Because I'm ahead here in the middle regardless. Yeah. Oh, it's going to come down to the breaker, which I think we lose because of the soul stone, unfortunately. Close game. Maybe I'm supposed to move the Nightcrawler to the right to play around a one drop there. That's probably the case. Because if they play a one drop left, I'm ahead by enough points there. Yeah, I think I, I think I played this wrong. I also should have moved Jeff on turn five, and I realized that as soon as I hit end, I should have I should have been able to play Miles out this turn. But I fucked. I fucked that up. As soon as I clicked submit, I was like, oh, Miles is in my deck. I should. I should have moved something. With the with the position I put myself in, the correct play on six is that I crawler should have gone right. I think I'm waiting on these because, well, Angela into both of them. Hey, Hashioto. Thank you for the brand new Prime. Have you played Spectrum Destroyer actually yet? Maybe we'll make a point to it. I don't know. I don't find the Spectrum Destroyer deck super exciting to play. It's a black box behind Moon Girl and the Deck Tracker. It's got a graphical bug. Victory. They discard Hella? They did discard Hella. Okay. I wasn't paying attention to what happened to their Moon Knight. They discarded Hella. Oh well. You think with the new cards coming up, move will be viable? No idea. It's like asking me to look into the future. You know, we don't even know what the format will look like between now and then, right? Like, before the move cards start releasing in June, we're gonna have six weeks of OTA updates every week, plus another half a dozen cards added to the game. Hey, Beats, thanks for the third of a year. Welcome back. And NTT, thank you for the five months. Good morning, good morning. That's true. There's another another patch before the the June releases as well. Um, do I want a second copy of Jeff? I know I want a second copy of Miles and Shang. I don't know that I'm going to have the energy to play a second copy of Jeff out. I guess I get like Jeff, Jeff on four. All right, sure. I think Jeff is better than taking randoms out of Quantum Tunnel. Alright, well I was gonna shake Chi next turn, but that's no longer what we're doing.
I guess Polaris and Lizard are the same location as technically. Anti synergy. just play smaller things here is the problem. This one could definitely break either way. Yeah. We lost to a human farming angel boosters. I don't see any bot splits in here. Could go either way. None of all of these are our splits humans have. This angel's not usually a card that human beings are playing. Animated. Is it weird saying my own name for a card? Nah. Excited! I'm hoping the new card release section of the shop works well tomorrow. Be able to just grab it right away and not have any issues. There'll be an OTA patch this week. Yes, there's an OTA patch every week that we don't have uh, a regular patch. Uh, Stegron is the new card tomorrow. BRB, gotta go watch and like that YouTube video. There's the real MVP. Chat, Twitch doesn't have an algorithm. It just lets people click into content they actually want to watch. So if you, you want to help my content on the on the demonic algorithm platform, click the YouTube video in the pinned comment and give it some watch time and a thumbs up. Stegron comes out tonight, right? No. It, the cards don't have an exact release time, but they typically release sometime between... Uh, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Central Time. Xanthias! Thank you for the three and a half months. Clicks into the content I want to watch. What a novel platform. The timer on the store runs down to tonight, though. Does it? Okay, my understanding was that was not going to be changing, but we'll see, I guess. I was not, it was not communicated that that was going to be changing. We'll find out, I suppose. Dirty Ohio, thank you for the the brand new Prime. Think we'll take a look at that after this game and take a screenshot. My my understanding is they have to manually add new cards to the client currently. Man, we really got their viper, huh? Can we snap them? Kind of want to snap them, chip. Hey, congrats on Infinite, Az Azazel. Uh, there's no reason to play either of these cards because no matter what I draw, I can play both of these cards plus what I draw for the turn. The Sara let us cast Ebony after turn three. Yep. Ooh, that's actually great, right? Because I get to yank one of these out of here 
Meaning that they can't shrink my lizard? Maybe I'm supposed to play Miles here, actually. Well, I could be yanking the hood. Titania means they have to play middle if they want to win here. They might, they might play for middle and left, which could get us here, because I'm only at seven here. Like I said, there could be merit to using Spider-Man. Miles over here. My hope is that they'll see the three cards for Lizard and try and play something big for here. Grab the hood! Grab the hood. Yeah. If I had played Spider-Man here, we'd still lose, right? Your whole weekend was playing after playing at 75% Galactus. Yep. Wing Nazgul, thank you for the 23 months. Welcome back. No joke, the best thing you could do when you play against Galactus if you never want to play it again is close Marvel Snap. Having a shitty experience cause you to play less snap is one of the ways to get that shitty experience potentially changed. It's a, a reason why when my streams end early with some frequency, it's because we queued into Galactus. By playing zero into the Vormir, I really don't have a better card to play into there, right? Why not, Radio Protector? Thanks for the half a year. The seasoned Sandman and Galactus decks have made me an avid participant in the complaining thread on the Discord server. Yep, that's what it's there for. I didn't move Nightcrawler. Yeah, I was playing Polaris, Chet. Yeah, because they, they haven't triggered Vormir yet, right? So we're adding... Uh, what is this? 21 in the middle? And then we're adding 8 more here on the left? I, uh... I had posted a tweet last week talking about how I felt how how uh, the the first tweet was just delete Galactus and the second one was a follow-up explaining why in my opinion it generates shit gameplay 
And a, d a day later, I started getting a bunch of really, sh like, shit take replies from a bunch of people that don't follow me over the course of a few hours. And I was like, I was like, well, what happened to this? Why is this blowing up all of a sudden? Um, and sure as, sure as shit, someone had posted the Twitter thread or a screenshot of the tweet onto the Marvel Snap subreddit. And like stupid moths to the flame, they just decided to clog up my mentions like a bunch of dickheads. All right, updated Twitter command. If you also hate yourself enough to use Twitter, you can find Jeff here. <laughs> I think I'm playing Star out into Murder Worlds. Sorry, bud. Oh, my weekend was great. Our deck probably doesn't generate big enough numbers to be competitive here, huh? Slide night crawler on the off chance we draw. Miles through six rocks. Sometimes lucky rubber ducky. Um, uh, Ultron puts 18 here up to a lot. This is, this is too little to beat Ultron here, right? Because the numbers it puts out are better in the current format than they were previously, as well. There's also been less enchantresses around to hard counter it. The context of the format changed, so my opinion on the card changed with it. Does hitting infinite as pull one have merit? I don't know. Does playing against computer AIs have merit to you? What constitutes having merit? It's a little bit different to each individual. I personally don't find beating up bot opponents particularly satisfying, but if you do, I'm not gonna yuck your yum.
probably ending up in Gudlun. We'll see. They're probably Surfer? Oh, we're gonna get hit by the bug, chat. We're gonna get, we're gonna get hit by the bug. There's cur currently a bug in the client where when I copy with Moon Girl, the copied miles doesn't cost one. I think I'm saying it anyways. I have like double Ebony Maw miles. Maybe we'll draw to Tanya. But it's sad. It's sad that we might lose to the bug. So this, this Miles is supposed to cost one right now. He does not, obviously. Could be the difference between winning and losing this. Okay, so they gain six here, they go up to 34. Did I beat that? This is... Each of these are nine. This is eleven. Twenty, twenty-nine, thirty-six. We're winning that. Yep, and we lost the game because of the bug. So, you wanna... We would've, we would've had Miles Morales here, which would've been kicked into the center. So we would've been uh, 16 here mid. Yeah, Miles, Miles literally anywhere would've won the game. Uh, if you look, Speaking, speaking of my Twitter, um, if you look on there, there's confirmation from Glenn Jones that they had patched that bug previously and they were unaware that it made its way back in and that it's a priority to fix. But in the meantime, these Moon Girl Miles decks are a bit worse because of that bug. So I like to call it a comment in chat. That's a good... A good general note, because people make this mistake a lot, it prevents them from getting better. They said, if you hadn't moved Jeff, you'd have won that previous game. The question you need to ask yourself is not, if I didn't make this play, does it win me the game? The question you need to ask yourself in spots like that is, was I supposed to make a different decision with the information that I had at the time? And I think on average, I'm supposed to play to all three locations there because there's no deterministic place they're going to spread out to between the center or the left. There's a there's a different world where they juggernaut a different spot and we lose we lose that, right? Or they play Silver Surfer with their other thing and we lose that if we play both middle. That's a good one. <sighs> I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me.
I think Sora needs to be a 3-5. I think you can get like one more stat. I think five stats would be a lot. You play Jeff through Sandman, you can. Which probably meant I was supposed to wait. Uh, which probably meant I was supposed to uh, play something else when they waved us there. When Sora removes the abilities of ongoing cards, you can Patriot buff those cards. Yeah, but it also removes Patriot's decks too, right? So like you basically have to hit You basically have to hit um, Patriot first, which makes it pretty narrow in bed. I like you to do better. It's okay. Shang Chi's not a format staple anymore, or not a must play, I should say. The meta game feels different than before. I don't know that I would say it's healthier or better, but it's different, which is a nice change of pace for a little while at least. I do this and hope they play one thing. I think in general, it's a very hard sell to say the current format is better than the previous one because I think a lot of people just kind of had... They were just sick of Shuri, right? Like, Shuri had been the deck for so long that the change of pace is nice. Yeah, like Leech and Shuri are finally gone. But like as far as like format diversity goes, the Electro Sandman metagame percentage is very similar to the Shuri metagame percentage was previously. don't think someone said we're at infinite versus not. I actually don't think how different is infinite versus not at the moment so these are I was looking I was looking at this earlier so these are in my opinion if you want to get a feel for what is the most competitive in the game you should be looking at 70 to 99 on here that tends to be where the tryhard decks concentrate the most so Electro, Electro is 16%, Galactus is 12%, Patriot is almost 10%, Darkhawk is 8%. Man, Enchantress and Super Scroll and Rogue are looking real good still. But if we if we change that to post infinite, what happens to the popular decks? Darkhawk drops in half, Patriot drops in half, Galactus drops by 4% or a third, Electro Ramp drops in half. So yeah, that's true. There is there is still a lot more diversity inside of Infinite because a lot of people, such as myself, we just like don't try to win once we're in Infinite because there's no there's no reward for winning inside of Infinite. Oh yeah, because it bears repeating, Cerebro three still sucks shit. <laughs> what's the what's the full range on Cerebro three? Is it winning at any point? 
Nope, even even when we look at when we look at all of it, still sub 50% win rate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. There's actually a penalty to winning an infinite. Yes. And actually, that's something too that's interesting. So one other thing that's amusing from these stats is that only do the do the play percentages drop off. But like Dark Rock has a 0.23 cube rate. I think usually the cube rates drop too. No, it actually goes up for that one. That's interesting. In previous seasons, the cube rates kind of go went down across the board. It's also worth noting, and actually, this is an interesting metric too here. The total number of games played post infinite is really low in comparison. Like the 70 to 99 has 350,000 games. The post infinite games only have 120,000. Well, I don't know. I don't think we get a sample of how many users that comes from. There's a lot, lot less post infinite games recorded. And again, this is just people that are using the untapped tracker like I have on my screen. It does not grab the entire population player base, etc. Someone asked, do you ever see yourself doing the Cerebro challenge for the terms of content? I think it is, it's so wild to me that those things had so many views for some people because it's such a weird, I don't think it was good content. I, other people enjoyed it more power to them, but in my opinion, it was not something that I enjoyed watching. It did not seem particularly skill intensive. Watching some of the people try and get good times for it was just like them randomly resetting their timer a bunch when like a given thing ran long. Like what matchups you ran into or when people retreated played a big, a big part of it. What was a Cerebro Challenge? It was something a bunch of content creators did where they like ran a timer to see how many hours it would take them to get a match win with Cerebro's like zero through 10. Which, like, sounds kind of novel at first, but then you realize it's, like, pretty long and tedious to actually have happen. Do you have any messages for Tucker Carlson? He moves on from Fox News. I mean, like, I get that people are excited that it looks like Tucker's been removed from the network, but, like, you gotta remember, chat, that evil grifter has made his millions of dollars and realistically never has to work again in his life. So like, yeah, I guess it's kind of a small victory, but also like... It's hard, it's hard for me to take too much joy in that, knowing like what he has in store after for him. He already had a family fortune. Yep. I assume Tucker parting with Fox is probably some combination of the Dominion lawsuit settlement and or them having to negotiate with the news network or the cable networks for what they're gonna pay to have Fox back on. Could be the result of either. Their, their contracts are all up for renewal. It's unfortunate that we didn't have Nightcrawler down yet. It came a turn too late, so we can't get Miles cheaper. I think that was part of the settlement. I don't know if the full details of the settlement are public. Are Stature decks any good? I think Stature is like a solid B tier card. I got a, I got a couple Stature decks in my in my editor. We'll probably play some of her today. I think the play to wind line is like Shang-Chi here, Lizard here, hope that whatever they flip out of the lockjaw can get cut down. 
Why is it that there are decks that are better in battle mode than ranked? There are decks that are better in battle mode than ranked? Based on what? What's your sample or evidence to posit that claim? Lockjaw negative Thanos. Victory. No, we did all uh we did all viewer deck submissions on Friday again, Del Keep. Hey Kelsey! Thanks for the entire year of support. Let's get your sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. Well probably I think it's been a second since I posted a surfer highlight. We'll probably, we'll probably play some Surfer this week to post a video with. Yeah, it's been three weeks since I posted a Sarah Surfer deck. I usually, I usually try and wait two to three weeks between posting repeats. You know what the new Leech, does he activate uh, after the top deck? No, Leech leeches their hand before they drop. So you get your you get your card draw still. Hey Johnny, thank you for the prime. Appreciate it. What's the best deck to climb with right now? On Friday, I posted a video titled "Best Decks in the Developing Meta Game," where I talk about not only what are the best decks right now in my opinion, but also good decks to counter them, and then other good cards to consider brewing with in the current format. Is this enough stats to win here? It might be. Hey, what's going on, Rolk? Thanks for the third of a year. Chat, if you're looking for some more Marvel Snap content, Rolk is someone I lurk in the evening sometimes when he's around streaming some Snap. Be sure to check him out. Potentially sends Satania over. I think this is fine. Wilker, Wilker, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. Yes, for those of you just joining us, we talked about this earlier. This Miles not costing one last turn is a game bug. And thankfully it doesn't really matter in this particular instance, but it is, it is in fact bugged. Oh, I guess. I guess I kind of messed up here. Because I actually can't beat their dino because of Machine World, right? Is the dino supposed to be like that? Yes, it is intentional that the Devil Dinosaur and Time Stone are split together. That is Lockjaw's intended intended gameplay mechanic. This is, this is the buggiest card in Snapchat. It has a ton of, ton of small graphical things like this. Yeah. Rip. Time Dino. Escaped.
Ooh, that's nice. Drop the Sorin. To the left, to the left. Mr. Fantastic gonna slide to the left. This is a snap lap, right? Snap. We get to Moon Girl, copy these three next turn. We get to pull their Ant-Man out of Asteroid M. Hey, Nuggets, thanks for the five buds. Here's to hoping we'll be snapping in five more indeed. Ongoing Thanos, solid deck. We could get Professor X this turn. Do you recommend buying Kang? Uh, I don't know, how fun are you at parties? I guess would be my question to you. So I spread my stats out here uh, to not give them a free Professor X light anywhere. Rewarded. No, no freebies in Hoaglandia. for the hiccup there. Our connection zeroed out for half a second. Triproctic, thank you for the half a year. Shang Chi was an unfortunate draw. We literally could have played any other card in our deck there in Demuria Isle. We wouldn't have wanted to play Ebony Maw, but anything other than Shang Chi and Maw would have been a good draw there. Jeff would have been an exceptional pickup.
Nightcrawler gives us some control over where this Titania ends up at, so that's nice at least. Well, I guess we do need to move him this turn. I want to make sure I play the original Titania because your opponent can see the created by Moon Girl text. I don't want them to know that that's coming. We just do this. I could be right to play my other Titania out here. Wait, they passed? Really? I think they're going to play into the island. I assume they have She-Hulk plus cards here. Whoa, that was more than I was expecting. Monkey ends up left, then we lose. to tell you here we win but we we don't play miles here we win yeah what on turf doctor thanks for the 20 months welcome back Never stamp since I'm infinite. Yeah, mostly not. Just doesn't matter. Uh, recording games to their full completion is also better video content for YouTube highlights. So, generally speaking, stamping has a downside with relatively zero upside. Technically, we could do this and then play these here, right? Well, 
What logic do you use when playing to locations that are faced out? It really depends on the context of the rest of the board. Like on this board, for example, uh, and the cards you're playing too, right? Like Nightcrawler and Jeff are great cards to play to face down locations because um, you you don't get punished for them really, right? Because you could move them out later. I'm doing this. And I do this. Do I need these here though? Definitely putting these here. I kind of feel like I want to play around Valk on Cherie's lab. Putting my smaller thing here. Yeah, what the what the board looks like, what cards you're playing, what cards in your deck, all of these things impact. Like, whether or not you want to play to face down locations. Like, how do I know to play to face down locations is one of the questions people ask a lot when it comes to staff. It's just one of those things that just doesn't have this easy, always do this, never do this type answer. Close game. Miles boosters to split him yet? I'm playing a lot of him. 55. Hey, Sonnet. Thanks for the over two and a half years. Welcome back. Is Jeff a core card here? Uh, you can play Iron Fist over Jeff, but I think it's a good bit worse. The, the decks where you're playing Miles for Alice are some of the hardest to swap Jeff out in because he's just one of the best enablers for Miles in the game. For the four freaking years, STM, appreciate it. All right, things are looking a little sandy here. Now, one of the nice things here is I can play Titania out into Subterranea and kind of have control over when, what we're playing there and when. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have played Jeff out too for the sake of being able to move it to make Miles cheaper. Yeah, yeah, that was a mistake on my part. This be Doctor Doom. It doesn't, right? This be Doctor Doom. Going to seventeen here. There would be seven. And six, 13, 14. This beats Dr. Doom, assuming their Jeff stays where it is, but their Jeff could move.
Is it typically optimal to play out Thor before Lockjaw when both are in hand? Uh, it depends on the rest of your hand. Like if you have Wasp, for example, you want to use Wasp and Jaw on three typically, especially post change where you can only play Lockjaw one card per turn. We actually don't know currently if Stagron is out when they manually add it tomorrow or if it releases automatically when the timer ends. I've reached out to my contact at Second Dinner to find out. Hopefully, hopefully they get back to me before the stream's done. B Knight, thanks for the half a year. So you can close it on your infinite. Yeah, pre-patch is completely different, Socio, because we now have the the weekly new card release section, right? Oh no! Shit! They leached me! I could probably still Jed just because our hand's bad, our deck sucks, but the leech didn't do a whole lot. If they all tried Nidvaler, it's 37 there for them. And then it's uh, plus nine here. We go by, so I guess we're still beating, we're beating Ultron here. Is this beating Ultron here? This is uh, 30, 37. Is that right? And they'd be going to 37. I lose on breakers, right? Are any bundles better than Throg? If only, if only there was some way to figure out which bundles were coming up and my thoughts and opinions of the value contained within them. <sighs> All three mid beats Ultron. Ooh, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, they'd only be 12 middle. Good catch. The people telling me to use Shang Chi, chat, we got fucking leeched. Typical Rhino deck in the format is Cerebro 3. We're going to be testing Honkai Star Rail. Um, I'm only doing sponsored stuff and Snap on stream at the moment. If they reach out for a sponsored opportunity, I'll probably check it out, but... Just hard to justify making time for other things at the moment. Class Machine. Thanks for the third of a year. Welcome back. Mm, 
Yeah, we're probably dead to Killbot. Here's a good take. Is there any new info on the DC card game? Uh, they tweeted over the weekend that they would have a playable game in a few weeks. So sometime next month in theory. Yeah, we only did variety streams the week before Rang because we were waiting on a snap patch. The current the current snap patch is like a touch more Galactus than I would care for, but overall it's a marked improvement. To the people that are suggesting or asking why I didn't give them to Tanya, you do realize the rest of their cards keep their numbers, right? And I get that we're super caught up on the cheeky thing, but if I send them the Titania, I'm still not winning two paths. I'm guaranteed to lose the Titania path, and I'm not winning the other two. Bezos, thanks for the five bucks, appreciate it. Enough said, Bob. Damn it, Moon Knight! why we can't have nice things. Is that what's going on here? Yes, okay. Good on Gilded, thanks for 37 months. Next real bad to surfer. Rogue and Shang-Chi. Neither Rogue nor Shang-Chi can interact with it. And our numbers aren't quite big enough. What was the camping trip? Very cold. Got down to a little below freezing overnight. It was like a high of 40 during the day. The kids had a good time though. I mostly sat by the campfire. Jeff, in you go. So, Yandu into Psylocke, uh, probabilistically, is Galactus here? So we snap. Because of the locations, they can't play to Sanctum, they can't beat us at Dust Domain.
Okay. Galactus Gamer. I think Stature's fine. If you, you like her, she's like a reasonable B-rate card. In. So this Black Bolt might get us in trouble against the Deck Plague Lady Sif. Got him. No! Oh, fuck, Chet. God damn it. I have some regrets. I have some regrets. This works how I want it to work, right? Oh, in my brain, this was the... Man, it's a fucking Monday, chat. In my brain, this was uh, the one that tucks it into my deck. Yeah, the other the other quantum one. It worked for them. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't win left. Gosh, if I was plus seven power, we could probably win left. Left. Escaped. today's laugh of the morning chat someone wrote me a two paragraph unban that starts with I don't want to be unbanned it's like yes I'm sure you wrote me two fucking paragraphs because you don't want to be unbanned and then, and then they topped off their two paragraphs of rambling with comparing being banned in a twitch chat to me being Joseph Stalin. If you've ever wondered how desperately some of these motherfuckers need to go outside and touch some goddamn grass, that is how desperately they need to go outside and touch some grass. Playing this for tempo. Yes, Jeff has killed millions of his own viewers. I promise you, these people have had so little bad things happen to them in their lives that to them being banned in a Twitch chat is quite literally in their brain as oh, bad as someone go. as abhorrent as Joseph Stalin. Reasonable, reasonable, sane, very stable individuals.
Yes, exactly that. It's like it's like when something bad happens to my three-year-old. She's had so little bad things happen to her that it's the worst thing to ever happen. And drops her cookie on the floor. Lit might might as well be dying. It's terrible. You laugh, but I bet you're going to get a strongly worded note from their mom. <laughs> Floor cookie is pretty terrible. That's true. The drop rate for Series 4 in reserves. You are guaranteed to get one Series 4 card per group of 40 reserves. And if you didn't know that, there's probably some other important things you don't know about how reserves works. Be sure to check out this YouTube video here where I break down all the dirty details on reserves in Marvel Snap. Floor cookie is much worse than getting banned from shit. That's true. That's true. I agree with that. I agree that floor cookie is big sads. Hey, congrats on Infinite with Century. It takes a ton of fun. Fist Tower animation is underrated. I don't know. I think everybody I talked to is just one of the best animations in the game. They'd be pretty right. I saw I saw a meme going around on the on the interwebs the other day. Where it was like, you know how how the they're always like, yeah, communist sounds good in theory, but it never works out in practice. And it was just like, yeah, capitalism doesn't even sound good in theory. <laughs> On farewell, we'll see you and good day. I think we just play for all three here, right? This puts us to 12, this puts us to 18. Good night crawler in the middle. Oh, I guess lighting it up like this loses to Doctor Doom though, right? Just beat Doctor Doom. This puts us to 10, 15 here. Uh, Jeff will die if he's played into Death's Domain. Mm, we're gonna lose because we tried to play around Doom, aren't we? Woo! Sometimes lucky rubber ducky. Victory. Uh, the audio on Fist Tower has been there for a little bit. If I recall correctly. Can you Zola Jeff into Professor X locked lane? I think so. I think so. I don't actually know the answer to that. Firm, I think so. I'm playing the rock out here because if I draw Colleen Wing, I don't want the rock cluttering my hand from Swarm. Sometimes you make your own luck, Jeff. Ooh, that's a little punishing. Punishing.
Damn it, Bobby! Fuck, Moon Knight. Mile splits do I have? I think I think this mile split will let me get a chance at pink, right? Got one, two, three, four. Oh, it's another chance for a gold border too, then. All right, we're gonna see. I think we're gonna try and find third. We're gonna play a bunch of Jeff decks to try and farm thirty miles boosters today. Hey, lubrication! Thanks for the five months. Welcome back. You want to wait for the battle pass, Miles? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like this, Miles. This derpy face. Wait, I mean, I, I technically already have a battle pass, Miles, too, right? Miles is the first card to... Um, Miles is the first card in staff to get a second battle pass variant, right? Cosmo. Okay, good show. Okay, I don't think they're Galactus. It's Doom Wave, right? Killmonger, sure. All right, and then the Strange Academy is moving Polaris. So I think we just end because Miles will be one. We can play a bunch of five power things out. We're hoping to draw Jeff next turn. Is Jeff. Yep. Might even win all three here, honestly. Yeah, we actually actually won all three. Good night. Am I gonna buy the first Jeff variant I see in the shop? Yeah, probably. They're all pretty good. I don't think he really has bad variants. Take advantage of the double Google play points for snap purchases this weekend. I actually don't need uh, snap purchases anytime soon. Which feels weird to say after spending so much for so long.
sitting I'm sitting on like 10,000 gold and as you will learn from my bundle breakdown video this morning uh, the upcoming cash only deals uh, are gonna be way better than buying gold directly I think I am mostly HLA waiting for those Man. Ooh, I bet they're gonna move Bishop into kill near, huh? Black Bolt? That's exciting. Do I want to f compete with this bishop inside of Kiln? This puts me to 15. The bishop is two, so it puts them to four. And they have one, two, three, four, five slots open. This would be up to seven. Oh, it's three. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to compete here or not. It's close. So in theory, if they fell the board, we're tied to left. Hit infinite storming limbo on turn six, you're a monster. Yeah, Blue Marvel beats us. Definitely a card in their output range. Ah, Breaker! We're down by four. This game. It adds a Kazar or Blue Marvel. Yeah, I guess Ant Man makes uh, Kazar likely to. Or well, Blue Marvel's in most Thanos decks, Kazar's not in a ton. I'm likely to play Miles next turn. Are you a Marvel fan or is just CCG's intro the motivation to keep playing Snap? Well, making content on Twitch.tv and YouTube is my full-time job in Cognito. So my primary motivation for playing games here on Twitch.tv is a desire to feed and clothe my family. I think with the Widow's Bite in hand, I have to play this turn and then pass the following turn. Definitely not great though.
Jeff does this for money. I, it always makes me chuckle when people who are my detractors talk about Jeff streams for money. Like it's some kind of secret that this is my job. <laughs> like, yeah, I like Marvel Snap. I think it's better than a number of other card games. But the reason, the reason that I'm here as many hours as I am per week is certainly because it's my job. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. If I, uh, if I didn't need an income, I'd probably play some Marvel Snap and stream a handful of hours a week, but I definitely wouldn't work, put, you know, 50 to 60 hours a week into it like I do currently. You weren't heir to a huge trust fund, it just financially said I was not. Joe, Jeff is just passionate about cocaine bear mini games and movie trailers. <laughs> hey, I think that cocaine bear trailer game was low key one of the more amusing uh, Twitch bounty board things I've done. Don't knock, don't knock the cocaine bear bounty. That's right, I enjoyed that one. I read Marvel growing up. I was not into comics growing up. I rough. I watched, I watched all the different MCU movies and stuff, but never, never a big comic book person. All right, chat. Red Skull, Red Skull's not a thing anymore. Can we play this for a little bit? I like this deck a lot. Need, I need more brood boosters. We missed on our brood split. A bunch of Mr. Sinister boosters. Hey, Acera, thanks for the 27 months. Should split this lad at some point. Need to split Blue Marvel again. I missed out Mr. Fit. There's a bunch of cards in here I actually really want boosters for. One, two, three, four, five splits. Yeah, I think this deck's okay into Sandman. You're like not amazing into Galactus, but you're not just dead to it either. Like Goose and Storm and Hobgoblin are all like fine there. We didn't get the mile split yet, but I was looking, it's been a little while since I posted a highlight with this one. I wouldn't mind getting some games in. We have the most ink splits in the community? Probably not. I probably have the most ink splits out of anybody that makes content regularly. It's probably a realistic take. Need to play Cerebro 5 with Miles. I don't know about that one. The five cost Ghost Rider was the cheapest card in our opponent's hand. Experience, yep. Well, 
Mr. Sinister into the vault. And then we get to Mystique Cerebro here. I wanted to gamble, I couldn't do anything. Sure. Victory. Oh, you know, we're playing Mystique with our inked Cerebro. We should use our inked Mystique. Those cards, I have two good variants in Splits form. Oh, stand up for a little bit, huh? Stretch the legs out. Is it stellar for us? Might be our storm location here. Hey, Kazoo Croc, thanks for the 20 months. For Darkhawk Dino, can Agent 13 work as a Colson replacement? I think that deck really wants Colson. Being able to go Devil Dinosaur into Mystique Agent Colson on turn six is a big deal. Isn't Surfer a better Cerebro? The number one thing you could do to get better at card games is remove the concept of strictly better, strictly worse from your vocabulary. Surfer is a different deck from Cerebro. It's not a better deck. They're very different cards. Entirely different deck building restrictions. They both, uh, th both Cerebro 2 and that play Brood as a card that they play with, but that's kind of where the similarities stop. This is probably a Hobgoblin, right? What headset do you use? I have a Bose Quiet Comfort 45. This is the most money I have ever spent on a pair of headphones, and I have uh, no regrets. Quality, quality piece of hardware. And Fister Mantastic here means that we're even winning the Flooded through a Doctor Doom. The question is, do we expect them to be able to beat us here? Playing two things here means we shrink the Lizards. I think we're mostly good to go. We'd be going up to eight and maybe going down to minus one. And our, our deck notably has three cards in it, so their Hawk's not very big. And their hand is small, so their Dino's also not very big. Let's go to Cube, six for the third of a year. Did a content creator post a Hella video recently? It's our second second Hella matchup so far this morning.
What is the free series three claim reset? That resets at the start of the season. How has increased in popularity to see me? Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's fine. We play, we played a bunch of Hell last week, and it's still super inconsistent. All right, we're gonna go look at Untapped and see if there's a Hell deck with stats here in a second. I think we're dead here. Reported high rolled nice and nice and deep. <laughs> the, the old Agatha. Um, sort by uh, cubes. These are at infinite plus. What about the competitive ranks? Okay, these are some lower sample sizes, but we have some some real metrics here. Am I just grabbing the first one for later? I think I want to play some more Cerebro too. I think I might grab this first one for later. I think I like the look of this better than this. Is, Mor is Morbius good here? You don't really discard that many cards, right? Sixty to ninety-nine is a sweat. I don't know that I would count sixty as too sweaty. Yeah, seeing no Invisible Woman in the better performing ones makes sense. We tried to play with Invisible Woman and it was real rough. There's just, there's so many juggernauts and other things that screw with your Invisible Woman. All right, I'm just gonna grab the top one for later. I, play, I wanna play a few more Cerebro 2 games at least, but. but uh, check that out. Also, I paid, I paid for this chat. I gotta get some kind of value out of it, right? Finish putting my infant on to uh, orange border. Well, I think we're, I think we're out of credits. Sag, I'm out of credits. Do I have a mission left? I don't. All right, hold on. Hold, please. We're still above, we're still above 10,000 gold. Oh, I forgot to click the boosters there. Oh, this is a dangerous scroll. We'll open, we'll open all of our reserves tomorrow when Stagron drops. And we're, heading, we're heading towards collection level 20k. our ones or twosies, please. Okay. Okay. All stormy over here in the space throne. Yes, the blue marble is rainbow background with rainbow crackle. I'm waiting on a good split for him still. You get to pick where Stagrod moves the card. You do not. In general, Snap does not let you pick um, choices like that. You want to cut down on interface choices.
Yeah, it's all it's all random. Alright, we'll see where the strange academy pieces fall here. I am Iron Man. We're kinda hoping they all go right, huh? That works out for us? Yeah. Rude would have been a good draw. How about rock? I think with the rock draw, it's actually just this, right? I guess eight cards in it. They're losing to Hawk Mystique, unfortunately. Doctor Doom? I am Iron Man. Ah! What a close game. Close game victory. That's a weird build from that. Are they a Surfer deck, too? Or are they negative? No, Rock Slide doesn't make sense in negative, right? Maybe there's like a greedy, a greedy Hawk negative build that's like Rock Slide too? Hard to know. Well, shit. Stamp me so I can leave, please. Thank you for the five months. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Are they streamer also? No, they're just a dark hawk deck that you rocks off of. What's it called, Subterranean? Jokes on you, I'm into rocks, right? Is it against the terms of service to get stoned on stream? I am not your lawyer and this is not legal advice, but my understanding of the Twitch terms of service is that you can partake in things on stream so long as they are legal where you live, but you cannot accept donations to partake in things on stream. And you are still responsible slash liable for anything that you say or do while broadcasting yourself while under the influence. But I am not your lawyer, and if you have questions about how your Twitch contract slash partner agreement works, you should consult a lawyer. Touchpad, thank you for the half a year. Welcome back.
the club. So, the way this works, for those not familiar, is the mystique that gets copied back to my hand here has the Cerebro text on it. So now, next turn, I could play out a bunch of two power things, and then I'll have the option to play double Cerebro on the last turn still. Cloning Bats copies it back to your hand with its final text box. Need Zilla. Thank you for the two months of prime. I appreciate that. Welcome back. There's Spooter manning the middle. Just doing this, right? Here. You know what I mean? Iceman mid? I don't know that I need the extra stats in the middle. Oh, that's a big rip. We do we do need to dodge Soulstone here, yeah, that's true. We are very dead to a Soulstone. Well, Mystique's on reveal ulcer. She no longer has it on reveal. Wait, what? Oh, that's interesting. I thought it gets rid of it. I actually don't know the answer to that. I'm pretty sure she just no longer counts as having an odd reveal. It's weird that it still shows it as an odd reveal with the card behind it, but I'm pretty sure that's just no longer the case. It's just a weird visual representation. Victory. It's fine. We'll just draw blue marble. We'll be a blue marble deck. This Twitch stream, pre-recorded, etc., etc. Every time someone tells me. The biggest problem with Cerebro is that it can't beat certain locations. That person is secretly telling me that they haven't played this deck before and they don't have a lot of experience with it. The thing that pushed this deck out of the format for a significant portion of time had nothing to do with location variance and everything to do with the fact that it had a hard time into particular matchups. Soulstone, Soulstone and Red Skull were bad for this deck. Is a factual statement. I don't know if we can beat whatever this Wong is doing, though. We'll find out. Uh, Scorpion's not too terrible, actually. We dead to Odin? We are, right? Can you explain why an issue, why the location on a matchup, uh, location on issue matchups are, yeah, because you can play through location variants. Also, sometimes you hit bad location variants and you just fucking leave, chat. Every deck has bad location variants some amount of the time. Most decks, you look through the list of locations, their locations, you're like, yeah, if those come up or this combination that come up, it's bad for you. This deck also plays a card like Storm 
to mitigate that location variance. And it has games where you simply play Blue Marvel and copy Blue Marvel where you win that way instead. No, no deck wins all the time, and this one's included in that, but there's plenty, plenty of play and counterplay in spots that are bad for you. Per the stats, and I always have to repeat this a bunch whenever this topic fucking comes up, Cerebro 3 is a dumpster fire of a deck. It's very bad metrics. Snap, Snap them back. Per, per the metrics and my personal anecdotal experience, Cerebro 2 is the best Cerebro deck. It's our best draw here, Nightcrawler. Cerebro 3 is bad. What am I supposed to play Valkyrie? I actually don't think Valkyrie is very good at the moment. Part of the reason why that card was really good at Omnipresent in the previous format was she was the answer to Shuri. And Shuri is less present. If you look at all of the decks that are at the top of the metagame right now, Valkyrie isn't really good into any of them. There's, there's too many ongoings for Valks, yeah. Zabu, Nighthawk. Yeah, Nighthawk, Nighthawk is one of the best decks in the format. Do you retreat if you have a location which gives initial power? No, you play the fucking game out. I think we just chill. You don't need to, we don't need to show them that Mr. Sinister is going to happen here. I want them to think we only have four power in the center. Tiger could get us. Tiger's not super common at Mr. Negative. Jubilee could. Generally speaking, we're setting up Goose and Storm. We're going to put them in different paths. So we'll Goose one and Storm the other. That's unfortunate. Hobgoblin's one of the cards that makes us better into Scorpion because Scorpion makes Hobgoblin better, but can't really do much about a Sokovia as a follow-up. Unfortunately, we're going to die to Dr. Doom here. If the Sokovia hadn't taken our, our goblin, we'd have been able to get this. Ah, does Cerebro give us an out? Cerebro, we're at six in the middle. We're at 10 in the middle. If I draw Mystique, we could still win. 
Yeah, they could be some kind of weird hazmat deck. I think we lose more than we win here, so we just leave. And they can also have Tiger. If we had Hobgoblin, we'd stay for the snap. Because we'd fill their location up and then probably win. But without it, we gotta go. Is the flooding a hot location? Asking the real questions. I get that Cerebro 3 isn't as good as Cerebro 2, but I wouldn't call it a trash fire. What would you call a deck that has a sub 50% win rate at literally every intersection of ranks that you check on the rank ladder? If, if trash fire is not an appropriate term for a deck that meets that description, then what is? Breaks it. <laughs> Win aid my hand. I should know how bad this deck is. I think this deck is quite reasonable. The stats show that this deck is quite reasonable. We really want them to have priority going into this last turn. So when we brood the Nexus, we kind of get to mess them up. We'll see though. If they don't play into the flooding, we could, we could gain priority here. Damn. I think we still win this. Oh! Oh, if I do the Nightcrawler first, we get more stats. Yeah, I messed that up. I was thinking the other way. And then I... I this is where I would put my undo all actions button if I had one. But yeah, if I, if I Nightcrawler first here, the Brood and her, her, her Broodlings fill in. We'll see. We might still win despite my mistake. Let's find out. No, I was aware of the Teenage Warhead. I just wasn't thinking through the permutations here. It's not a card that sees a ton of play. They just think I couldn't put many stats in? Yes. If you're missing a card from this deck list that isn't Mystique, you can replace it with a two power card of your choosing. Mystique is not optional. She's very important to make the deck competitive. Mystique and Brood. Mystique, Brood, and Cerebro are the three cards that aren't replaceable in here. Luke Cage is not good in this deck. That's why I'm not playing him. You should play another two power card. Remove Daredevil, would you still play Hobgoblin? Yeah, probably. And for the record, I would only cut Daredevil if I was missing the card. I think Hobgoblin is necessary for making your Galactus matchup serviceable. It's also a card that's good in the deck, but it's extra good in that matchup. The storm here.
bounce action here for the opponent, looks like. Does turn five work if both players have Daredevil? They just cancel each other out. Hey, thanks, Kingdom. I assume you're talking about the bundle breakdown. Glad you found that useful. Hey, congrats on Infinite, Flib. I think the Control Thanos deck is a great choice right now. It's one of the reasons why I called it out in the best decks video. Hobgoblin mid because it restricts uh, how much they can bishop. I move? I actually don't move Nightcrawler, right? Because we're six, we're six to six. I'm adding three here. Yeah, I think we actually just do this, right? We play for play for all three. C3 is, Donk. Flow on average benefits my opponents more than me, but I guess the question is if I storm here, then I'm not going to be able to storm this. Yeah, I'm probably just supposed to storm this. Mm, our Hella matchup is not good. They get to sneak in under Goose and the Daredevil. Is it M'Baku better in this deck? No, a lot of the time you just draw M'Baku. It doesn't do anything for you. Yeah, people with older PCs especially have been having some crashes on the PC version of Step. My understanding of the latest version. Hopefully they get those fixed soon. I think about Iron Man over Hobgoblin. I think Iron Man is much worse than Hobgoblin. I think Iron Man is bad against a lot of the cards your deck is already bad into. And it's... It's bad into cards your deck is already bad into. And it doesn't... Um, it doesn't help you in spots where you need, you need help.
everybody's sitting here talking about how this game is bad for us. We're like a fucking great spot, chat. Are we like, are we watching the same game? Are y'all, what, what game are you watching, chat? It's okay, calm down. Look at that, Hobgoblin claims another victim. No, I didn't pull during the Steampunk variant, Steampunk variant rush. I didn't want any of the variants. The Shocker would have been nice, but I didn't want any other ones. I didn't want the titles. I'm currently title and avatar complete. Victory. How about replace Mr. Sinister with Luke Cage? I mean, like, you know. Technically, you could, like, make a Reese's peanut butter cup with, like, dog shit and peanut butter, but it probably wouldn't taste as good. So, like, yeah, you could swap it, I guess. I'd recommend against it. I have played an incredible amount of this deck. I am very confident that these 12 cards are the correct 12 cards to play in Cerebro 2 at the moment. Are we playing against Agatha? It feels like we're playing against Agatha. We're getting shit canned by Agatha, sorry. Rephrase. Feels like we're getting shit canned by Agatha. This is a bot split. This is not Agatha, it's a bot. This is a bot split. Uh, we're gonna die to the cheater bot. Um, this is 1820. Yeah, I think we actually have to leave. Cursive Puppet, thank you for the third of a year. Welcome back. What's a cheater bot? Cheater bots? Okay, two two definitions, for, three definitions for people at home that are new, because these things always always confuse newer people. Cursive puppet, thank you for the prime. Appreciate you keeping me here explaining things. First, when I say bots, bots are not bots that other humans have put into the game. They're bots that Second Dinner, the company, puts into the game to keep queue times low. Second, cheater bots. There are several different types of bot programming. One of them that the community colloquially refers to as cheater bots are bots that watch what plays you make and if they can beat them deterministically, they always will. So they have a permanent daredevil for the game. Three, a bot split. There are a small number of cosmetic infinity splits that are currently not available to humans. Border effects with no background effects are currently one of these. So this rainbow glimmer flare around the border is not a split humans can get currently. Um, inked 
inked background with no border effect is also a bot split that humans can't get currently. The rainbow sparkles do look very good. Agree with that. Uh, this was the Hella player from earlier, right? You think second dinner intentionally restricts bot splits? Will we have them today? No, we'll have them someday. They're just splits that they haven't added to the system yet. During the closed beta, for example, the Incafy splits weren't available to humans, and they were added to humans after the fact. Okay, this is a blue marble game, not a Cerebro game. Yeah, we're just gonna put a bunch of Orcas into the vats here. Gamers, yep. All right, Shamu, I choose you. Look, it's another game we won without ever drawing or playing Cerebro. And that is, again, why this is the best version of Cerebro. This build, more than any other number of Cerebro, wins games consistently without drawing its namesake, which is one of the reasons why it has resiliency to so much of the location variance people often complain about with this archetype, because you don't need Cerebro to actually win. You can just play through the location variants by playing your other cards out.
Opponent! If the mine gets stormed, do the rack stay? Sure do. All right, we could lose this. Hopefully they're passing here, thinking they're gonna get rid of the rocks. And then, oh, we can, oh, we can play anything that we draw next turn. So we'll have two things in the Mojo world. If we hit Cerebro, we win the center, though. We need Cerebro. Mystique. Damn, we're dead, huh? I don't! So, can chat help me out with this? Reddit and a bunch of very rude people in my Twitter mentions assured me that if I put a card like Hobgoblin in my deck, I would beat Galactus every time I played against it. There were so many people that spewed profanity at me and called me names while telling me I simply had to put a single card in my deck to disrupt the Galactus deck. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why, why we lost. Wrong hobgoblin variant. This is so confusing. Were they were they wrong? So you did read that Reddit crap for a few days ago. Yeah, Prevy, my mentions on Twitter started blowing up with a bunch of shitty hostile comments from people who didn't follow me, which I was like, oh, someone probably posted one of my tweets on the Marvel Snap subreddit. And naturally, naturally, that was exactly what happened. Ooh, the Ebony Maw into the Shuri's lab when the mirror dimension could be Sanctum Sanctorum is a bold play. Oh, <laughs> Levinar, thank you for the third of a year. Appreciate that. Welcome back. You see the Surfer Orca deck that's running around? I mean, why why does adding Orca to surf, Surfer add value? I don't understand. Can you explain? Why is why does that make the archetype better? Help me understand. It's an ocean theme. Do you know what actually is probably the strongest argument that Galactus should probably be fucking deleted from the game? Do you know what Rarity World Ship is? You know what, you know what Rarity World Ship is, chat? 
fucking ultra rare. The rarest possible. It's it's as rare as ego. Th this is the only other location that happens as infrequently as fucking ego does. It's like they they know that this is not an experience that should be happening all the time. So delete Agatha 2. So delete Agatha 2. This is the type of brain dead bullshit that comes out of people that browse too much Reddit. Agatha and Ego are nothing alike. You choose to put Agatha in your deck. And your opponent, your opponent doesn't get fucking mind controlled by you putting Agatha in your deck. Someone posted a picture of Wong and Galactus with the title, they're the same cards. Oof. Gamers. Gamers. Oh, we had someone on chat in stream last week that said Debris and Galactus were comparable experiences. So that, was, that one was up there for me in terms of in terms of head scratchers. This is like the one draw that could make me stay, I guess. Come get me, Agatha. Need uh, Infinite to go right here. Rip. Yeah, yeah, there's not a card that can undestroy the board. All right, let's try to get one more good game in with this. And I think we're going to play some Hella ourselves. We've queued into other people playing it a few times this morning and it's looked fun. Kang can undestroy the board. I mean, Kenny, it just happens again. If I storm the machine world, I won't have a place to play Blue Marvel. I think that's okay, though. Wind, aid my hand. They're, like, negative with a pretty bad draw, right? What we have going on here? Snap. Grendel, thank you for the almost two and a half years. Welcome back. Is it hard to achieve infinity rank? Uh, not when you're first starting out. When you are brand new to Snap and you're only in series one and two, you often play against a lot of AI opponents up to infinite because there aren't a ton of humans in that same matchmaking pool. But once your collection level expands and you start playing against mostly humans, it becomes a good bit harder to climb to infinite.
Yeah, I'd like I'd like to see Galactus only blow up one location or not be able to be played until turn six. Those are the two changes I wouldn't mind. Now, after all of our shit talking against Cerebro 3, it is worth noting that our deck has a hard time with Valkyrie. So we are likely behind in this matchup. If Dream Dimension hadn't been here, maybe we could have saved the Mystique for Marvel, but I can't Marvel at five because of the Dream Dimension, which sucks. Hey, glad you found the bundle video useful, Sockman. I don't go ahead and leave. Like I said, I think this match is bad for us. They are 75% to have their Valkyrie, which means they win the game. Definitely like to get rid of that one. What's going on, Dante? Thanks for the third of a year. Wind, my hand. Could be a mirror if they're also storming here. Yeah. Wind. Jeff the Land Shark. I think he's excellent. <laughs> the Deer Devils always cancel each other out like that. Yes. This one's the game. There's a world where this one's the game. Uh, Stagron is the new card dropping this week. Happy Monday, big baby. We were talking about that earlier.
Any recommendation recommendations I want decks to play? Yeah, if you check out my best decks video from Friday here, I walk over the decks I think are the best in the format right now. Give a breakdown on why that is and how to best attack them. Quick silver gaming. All right. They're not Agatha. What are my initial thoughts on High Evolutionary? It looks like it'll be Archetype Defining. Will that Archetype be playable? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, the Hello Fresh code is only for new customers. Goodbye, Link Hucker. I really think Daredevil is very good in this deck. Uh, my second dinner person has not pinged me back yet about the new card release. Oh, I should Sinister Duster, man. My brain is bad. Lose a Doctor Doom, right? Victory. Thanks, Schrodinger. I think the Thanos control deck is one of the better decks you can play if you hate losing to Galactus. That's one of the reasons I enjoyed it. Got a strong matchup there. I have a video on my YouTube channel for all the data mine stuff for May already. I'll do one for June when we get a little bit closer, probably. I'm still over a month out. My favorite archetype, I really like the Beast Bounce decks. They're just really bad against both Galactus and Sandman, so I haven't really been playing them lately. Well, I stay up for the new card. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think, regular series five cards usually don't have quite the same push. We also haven't gotten confirmation that it actually releases tonight yet. I'm low, I'm low key hoping that the new card releases actually tomorrow morning still. Because the, the 10 p.m. Central releases fucking suck. I really, I really wish they'd change the season rollover in general to midday. Shoe box, six for the five buns. Well, this prevents my hand from being too full, so that's nice. Reading Valk to maybe. I mean, none of us can know if you mostly played AI, side debt. We don't know what your matches are. No, second dinner is based on the left coast of the United States. So the current when things roll over is like the middle of the night for them too, or the start of the night for them, depending on how you look at it.
three, bro? Yeah, it's this one's the game. Uh, second generation confirmed that winning and losing more cubes hurts MMR more or less. There's a chance this one's the game. Lose to Doctor Doom, but like they play both their demons out here. Oh, I guess they have another demon in hit though. Oh my god, the Titania jumping across stops our brood. Wow, that's unlucky. Oh my god, we'd have won. Uh, rip. Cerebro is a horrible deck IMO. I don't remember asking for your fucking opinion. It's funny. That wasn't a timeout, I banned them. Anybody that thinks that that's a reasonable comment isn't a good culture fit for this channel. It's always fine to offer constructive, reasonable, actionable criticism or explain the reason why you feel the way you do, but just decks bad is really lazy and unwelcome. So we'll storm here Wind my hand. and she'll get pulled over and then we'll Mr. Sinister to fill plus Cerebro. This deck is neat. I think it's a ton of fun. It is by no means one of the best decks in this format, but it is reasonable and competitive and has the tools you need to be successful in most matchups if you play well. The metrics on untapped also agree with all of the things that I just said. Do you find Cerebro 2 or Silver Surfer more enjoyable? I think Silver Surfer is the more powerful deck. I personally enjoy playing Cerebro 2 more. I'm also a little snowflake who wants to feel special while he plays his video game though. And this deck's less common, so I'd rather play the less common deck.
I might just chill for a turn. That's a real good one. Dazzler! Maybe I'm supposed to <coughs> blue marble this turn so I can mystique next turn. I assume there's a squirrel girl or a Shauna over here on the left. All right, squirrel girl turns on Dazzler. We're good there, right? Pump up the jam, Algid Storm. Thanks for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. Yeah, no animation on Dazzler's, uh, more than a little sad for how much work it is. You're curious how the calculations are done. I mean, the numbers aren't in the spreadsheet. The calculations are purely how many collection levels you get from spending credits. I, I talked about it in the video, Kinetic. The, the ratios are turning gold into credits into collector's tokens from the track. That's how the ratios are calculated. Any consideration for Super Scroll instead of Goblin? Sometimes I genuinely can't tell if I'm being fucking trolled, chat. I gen I genuinely can't tell. Like I don't like is it is it real? Like <laughs> I don't I, I don't know. Please send help. No, if you split an inked or gold card, the result will not be not guaranteed to be inked or gold. Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, the location variance is kind of whatever, but the real kick in the dick is that we had two locations that were bad for Cerebro, but then we also had a third that we that made us not play Blue Marvel. Because our backup plan for the non-Cerebro games is to Blue Marvel. So like getting screwed out of that too really hurts, especially with no storm in the top little bit. 
Uh, they have committed to being able to select borders differently, but no ETA. It wasn't even on their roadmap, so I have to imagine it's many months out. They've said they've said a few times their two next major features are the conquest game mode that's coming this summer, as well as um, the PC PC widescreen UI also coming this summer. Thanos Control Brew. Yeah, I post Marvel Snap deck highlights almost every single day at youtube.com forward slash Oglandia Snap. If you haven't seen the Thanos Control deck, that means you missed a highlight from last week. Be sure to check it out. I just punch Shuri's lab here. What is Conquest? Conquest is going to be a Q for what is effectively the same as battle mode. That life, life total mode where you play until someone loses 10. The Green Ranger, thanks for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. Wait, how did that go to two? Oh, it's giving itself to. I was very, I was very confused. If I was like, wait, wait a minute, what? That's not right. Sounds like an unranked PvP mode. No, it's gonna be a it's gonna be like a pseudo tournament mode, is my understanding. You mentioned earlier that you think Valkyrie is weak in the current minigame game shift. You think Shang Chi is a better use of that slide? I think playing other tech cards is good there. In the best decks video, I talk about different tech cards at the end of the video. I think subbing Valk for any of the other tech cards is a fine choice. How's the Cerebro 2 versus Galactus matchup? It's fine. You have Goose, you have Storm, you have Hobgoblin. Obviously, anything is losable, but I think it's real solid. Yeah, I think the Master Mold Ronin deck is very reasonable. It's like a different version of the Dino Hawk deck, which is very good. Cloning Bats copies Mystique's text as well, right? Yeah, so this Mystique that is in my hand has the Cerebro modifier on it. Where do I live? I live in central Illinois, like two hours south of Chicago. Yes, I have tried Luke Cage and Hazmat and Wong in this deck, and I like the deck much better without those cards. Do we think I need a fourth Cerebro? I don't think I do, right? I think I just do this. I think I do this, and then next turn we go like Iceman Blue Marvel is my plan. Yeah. You see, it's graphics is at Illinois State. Yeah, that's where I did my uh, graduate degree at. Illinois State. We could fight over Shuri's lab if we wanted. Yeah, I don't think I want to though. Do I? We could surprise them and fight over it. That seems not, not great though. Okay, I think I want to just do this. This adds, uh, what? It adds eight here and then it adds four more for 12. Super good. Victory. All right, let's try.
try some of the hella deck. This deck lets me farm Captain Marvel boosters too. Super in. All right, hoping to not hit the Sword Master here. Nailed it. Damn it, Bobby. She's gardening, chat. Wind my hand. Good on time, Jubilee. Welcome to the party. fun deck to play in your opinion i think the decks that let you play a bunch of cards in the last turn of the game are the most fun it is enjoyable to figure out different and optimal sequencing permutations with a range of cards this is one of those decks that having the untapped tracker is busted for we've discarded jubilee and captain marvel Just to be able to check on those real quick if you haven't grabbed the untapped tracker chat and you enjoy my content and want a great piece of software, you can grab that using my link. I get one US dollar redo every time a new person installs that for the first time using my link. Yeah, unfortunately the decks that I really like playing are like pretty bad to both Galactus and Sandman. So I just like haven't been able to play the decks I like playing the most without giving up a bunch of our matchups. No, the tracker being transparent is something that's in, in OBS. My my tracker has the brown background, just like yours does at home. I have a... I have a filter that gets rid of it. Hey, Zoev, thanks for dropping by a live one. Good to have you here. AP hey, on snap.fan versus untapped. Uh, I think the untapped tracker looks a lot more eloquent. And the untapped tracker has mostly added all the features that snap.fan has at this point. Snap.fan had more features for a little while, but untapped caught up pretty quickly. For people that aren't familiar, the untapped folks did have done a tracker for... Uh, Hearthstone for years. They do a Magic Arena tracker, Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, I think one or two other games at this point. They are very much professionals in the industry. I know what know what they're doing. Yeah, individual card stats is something that uh, Untapped does not have yet. Hopefully we get that at some point. Classic Hella deck. Why no Ghost Rider? Because when I pulled up the Untapped metrics and searched for Hella, Ghost Rider was not in the deck that I decided to copy. Anyone else having a ton of crashes on PC since the last patch? Yes, many people. No, there is no known fix at the moment outside of upgrading your computer. I don't know 
know if any of the community trackers support iOS. Or sorry, macOS. None of them will ever support iOS. iOS just doesn't allow tracker type things. Snow Guard's just not a very good card to image. If you're asking me, Jeff, is there any optimal deck that contains Snow Guard? My answer currently would be no. Yeah, if you're missing Giganto, you can replace Giganto with just like any playable six drop. Pick a big number. Is it not decent in Sarah Control? Well, one, Sarah Control isn't very good right now because of all the Sandman. Two, uh, I think Scarlet Witch tends to be better in Sarah Control still. Gives you more stats for basically the same amount of energy. I pulled Snow Guard out of a reserve as you were saying that. Pulling Snow Guard out of a reserve is like being simultaneously lucky and unlucky. That's like, oh, you got a series five card out of a box, but also it's fucking Snow Guard. We are not lucky enough to play this deck yet. We'll give it we'll give it a few more a few more rolls here, but discarded Hellas and Hellas in the bottom two cards of the deck later. <laughs> what a trash fire. Appreciate everybody hanging out today, by the way. Great to see over 2,000 people in here for some Marvel Snap. A little Twitch tracker says we've had a handful of new followers today as well. For folks that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full-time here on Twitch. I'm here Monday through Friday from about 10 a.m. Central to about 3 or 4 p.m. Central. Usually do Marvel Snap for all or most of that time. The primary game I'm streaming these days. I also have a Hoaglandia Snap YouTube channel where I post highlights and other tidbits seven days a week. Usually try and change decks every uh, 90 minutes to two hours or so on stream and the best of those decks get in the daily highlights. Today, I'm gonna be signing off promptly at three o'clock. Sometimes, sometimes you run past three, but my, uh, my my two sons attend Pokemon Club on Monday afternoon, so I gotta take them over to that. It's gotta be off in time. Any magic content coming? No, no plans to play magic together anytime soon. I did say Pokemon Club. Yeah, they both play Pokemon TCG. How long would you say your normal work day is? Uh, somewhere between eight and 10 hours. All right, what all did we discard? Black Cat, Captain Marvel, Death, so Hela is more than Infinite. This beating Devil Dinosaur is worthwhile. Do I work aside from this or is this full-time? Streaming is my full-time income. I think this might actually be better. I don't know, it's close. Let's spin the wheel. Sometimes lucky rubber ducky. Yeah, Twitch is uh, Twitch has been my full time job for the little over five years now. Victory. 
I have I have three I have three small children and a wife. I would not be able to do this eight to ten hours a day if it wasn't my full-time job. Shout out. Shout out to all the Twitch Prime subs and paid subs that make that possible. Marcella Yor, thanks for the Prime, appreciate it. Do you think Hex killed off any market there could be for a Hex like TCG? I think Magic Arena killed off any market there could be for like a, a Hex like TCG. It's kind of like a digital version of Magic the Gathering and how that actually exists. Typing, thanks for the prime. Disney Lorcana is just going to be physical, is my understanding. I would love if they had a digital variation, though. It's my opinion on the DC card game. I mean, nobody has an opinion on the DC card game yet, right? We've, li we've li literally no one seen it. Hey, thanks, Collapse Mine. Appreciate you. Do we snap them? I think we snap them, right? There's a DC card game, really? Yeah, it's supposed to be releasing some point next month. They tweeted. They tweeted over the weekend that there will be a playable client in a few weeks. Mobile game. I actually don't know if it's going to be mobile or PC. I don't think we've seen the detail on that. They did get our Jubilee from the Bugle. Gosh, I think we might be dead. I think the play to win line here is I think I actually need Hella. I think I think I do this and hope to bin the Infidot and then rip Hella is the plan. Am I buying Stegrod? Yeah, I buy every card when it releases. Actually, the thing I haven't seen mention of with Lorcana is I haven't seen mention of a mobile client. Some of the early stuff mentioned PC. I have to imagine it's got to be on mobile too. It's being, actually, spe speaking of Hex TCG, it's being made by Cryptozoic. For people that remember, remember all that. Cryptozoic is a, a a board game video game company. I think Hex TCG would have failed even if Cryptozoic did absolutely everything right based purely on the virtue of being a Kickstarter application that over-promised and getting sued by Wizards of the Coast. I 
li I literally don't think they could have managed their game slash company in a way that made the product successful after the Kickstarter that they promised and Wizards of the Coast suing them. Do I already have decks put together for Stegrod? I do not. Usually we just build on stream. I think the game's gonna be very expensive IRL to play. I think there's a very good chance that the Lorcana game will be more about collectors collecting a bunch of Disney themed cards than it will be about playing an actual game. There's like a world where this one's the game, right? Copium. I am Iron Man. Yeah, I think I, if I was a gambling man and I'm sitting here playing Hella, so you know I am, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Lorcana ends up being like Pokemon TCG and that there'll be way more people that there will be way more people that collect it that actually play it. I actually think the... What's the, what's the best way to put it? Saying that Hex deserved to get sued by Wizards of the Coast shows a fundamental misunderstanding of how patent law works and how bigger companies bully smaller companies with it fucking constantly. For reference, one of the things Wizards of the Coast sued Hex TCG over was because the cards in their game turned to the right when they got activated. And I fucking kid you not, Wizards of the Coast had a patent on cards turning to the right to activate. And one of the results of their, their stupid fucking lawsuit was hex cards turned to the left afterwards. If you can't innovate, you litigate and you bully the smaller company out of being in the marketplace. Because bullying a smaller company with legal means is cheaper than innovating under capitalism. Ah, Galactus. Ah, Galactus. Coco, Coco. Escaped. All right, I think I got like one or two more cubes to lose with this deck before we move on to something that's reasonable. Figure we kick the tires on this and see if we can get something resembling a highlight, but this deck is still as bad as I remember. Do bots run Galactus? Uh, not, not currently. Am I crazy in thinking that when you're infinite, you want to play other more interesting decks? So that's the thing, though. Galactus is a deck that a lot of people find interesting. There are a lot of card gamers that the joy that they get out of playing card games is in taking joy away from other people. How many tokens you get per month as a free to play? Uh, somewhere between six to 8,000, depending on what bundle deals they run. Well, I guess we're dead. Escaped. 
I mean, the clog deck's pretty good when it gets, what, six things on the board arbitrarily for free? All right, well, let's let's try and play Hella until we can split this Captain Marvel. Oh, let's do let's do that. Four hours later. That was not the one I wanted to discard. What should they change Galactus? They should change Galactus to something that doesn't make me feel a strong desire to close Marvel Snap and play anything else when it flips up. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I don't hate Galactus players, chat. I just think less of them as people. It's like when my daughter picks her nose and eats her boogers. I don't think she's a bad person for eating her boogers, but I do think she's gross. Uh, this is 7, 20, 26. They have 19 already, so we're dead. Escaped. It was like someone... So I was complaining about our chat. They're like, Jeff's chat is so toxic. Someone compared playing Galactus to incest in their chat. That person got timed out, but someone still typed it. So the chat was toxic. He's like, ah, yes. Complaining, complaining that the terrible thing got moderated away because it existed to begin with. People. Some people just want to be mad. Just gotta, just gotta let them be. All right, flip the coin, Lady Sif. Nailed it. Yep. Yep. I don't think that really solves much, Jim. Most of the time, you know Galactus is there. Yo, do you know what would really... You know what would solve the Galactus problem for me? If they gave me a feature in the client to let me auto retreat anytime I would queue into someone playing Galactus and just keep me in the queue, but I lose a cube. If you gave me a box that said, Jeff, you'll never even know you would have queued into a Galactus player other than the fact that your cube count went down, I'd check that box so fucking fast. I'd be like, yeah, in. Just don't, just don't even tell me, just subtract a cube and let me continue to be happy and move on with my life. All right, infant up, please. How about this rock? Good old rock. Nothing beats rock. Oh my gosh, they would have, they took the line that lost them, the Giganto? Seriously? 
What a gamer! They knew the Giganto was there too from the White Queen. Got styled on shit. Funny how Electro is the real hero to Galactus. Big mood. Big mood. All right, we need to draw Lady Sip so we can discard this death. Okay. Okay, let's try again. I want to draw Captain Marvel next turn. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. This is fine. I have Sunspot, right? We even would have drawn the Captain Marvel chat. Thank you, Carol. I can no longer play you, but I appreciate you showing up when I called. All systems go. We've got two large lads here in discard. <sighs> Let the large lads hit the board. Let the large lads hit the ba 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 board. Okay, so you play death in this deck rather than Hulk because Lady Sif will discard death and not risk discarding your Hella. It's for people that are cripplingly unlucky, like I am. Cripplingly, cripplingly unlucky. All right, chat, I'm not doing my ads contract with regular ad rolls anymore. However, I am still doing Twitch bounty board stuff on occasion, so let's check out this movie clip for uh, this movie. Oh. Let's dig it, chat. What do we got? I feel like that's a good enactment of finding a bunch of gold. <laughs> It is from the same people that made John Wick. We're rich boys. Get down on your knees. Which probably means it's about to be a little brutal, huh? We got gold! Yes, a little brutal. Okay. He was a Finnish commander. He lost his home and his family in the war. He became a one-man death squad. He's one mean motherfucker that you do not want to mess with. You'll see what happens when you take everything from him. believe that he's immortal no he just refuses to die how many mines did we bury here all of them you and you the most fun 
fun you can have watching Nazis get destroyed. <laughs> this is about not giving up. We have a word for that in Finland. We might have a problem. We're gonna get to watch Nazis die, chat. A little bit of anti-fascism. I'm down. All right, back to back to farming Captain Marvel boosters. Appreciate everybody lending me your eyeballs for a moment. I like how Black Cat was lit up there for a second. Are we dead? My Jubilee doesn't work. Okay, we'll stay until they snap so we can farm Captain Marvel boosters. We didn't draw our copy of Death either. We missed on Death and Hella. Never lucky, Rubber Ducky. What's going on, Coach? Thanks for the four and a half years. Welcome back. I'm not a doctor, but the guy with the knife in the head might have died. Strong and Gling. What was the movie? That was um, S-I-S-U. Which doesn't really roll off the tongue. Play the Jubilee for the yucks. <laughs> Chat, I only stayed in because I need six Captain Marvel boosters, okay? This could be this could be our six Captain Marvel boosters. Sisu is how it's pronounced. Sisu? Sisu. Yeah, I'm excited for the killing Nazis was bad, actually, people from that that watched that movie. Sure, I'm sure some people will be big bad about it. Actually, so much for the tolerant left. Using Black Cat and Giganto. Um, just your favorite other big things. Magneto's a good one. He's a large lad. Hey, Salad. Thank you for the two months of Prime. I really appreciate the support. Folks like you make my job possible. Thanks for keeping me around. You ever run Ghost Rider in this deck? Uh, some of the builds run Ghost Rider. I just copy and pasted the best stat Hella deck on Untapped. And trust me, chat, when we get done playing it today, it might no longer be the best stat Hella deck. And we're working hard to make sure this is no longer the best stat Hella deck. I, t I did, in fact, steal a deck list again. All right, so Blade is going to discard Odin, and Odin is going to get flipped up in the center, and then Blade is going to discard Infinite, and then Hela is going to put Infinite into play and win the game. Rip. Rip. Never lucky rubber ducky. Oh my gosh. The Captain Marvel could have won the game, but she didn't because of play order. Big rip. Big rip. 
rip. So again, these end of game effects, damn it, Carol, um, they go in the order the cards were played out. So because we hadn't, um, we, we played her first, she checked to see if we were winning and we were, so she didn't move, but then the Mysterio flipped up and we lost. So she checks and then Mysterio flips up because Marvel was in play first. All right, Carol, the least you could do is gain six boosters for this game. Damn it, Carol. Salad bar ham cubes. I think I missed your resub, by the way. Thanks for the two months. Welcome back. We should always play Carol in the invisible path. No, because then she couldn't move into Fisk Tower. I, I needed to play her in Fisk Tower because she couldn't move there without dying. So she gets more flexibility if I move her there. Honestly, I think Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel is currently the only end of game effect that kinda cares about other end of game effects. So she should probably just always go last. I think it's just bad design that they go in the order that they're played currently. And I think she should just be hard coded to always go last. And if there's two Captain Marvels, tie break them, which one was played first or whatever. But her, her versus all the rest of them, she should just be last in my opinion. What's going on, double? I get a Nova and the Lockjaw deck gets a Thor. Fair and balanced as all things should be. Oh, that's true. We do have Killmonger, but that kills my Sunspot. I want to kill my Sunspot. Different deck I could play to farm Carol boosters. I, I think I'm ready to build one at this point. I've got I've got one more one more Hella game in me, and then maybe we'll build a Captain Marvel deck to farm six more boosters. You play her with Rescue. That's true. There's less uh there's less Shang Chi's running around. Rescue's a little bit better than she was before. We could look up top Captain Marvel decks on untapped. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just be net decking scum. Pray for a fast upgrade in five minutes. Listen, chat. I'm not too proud to admit that I've clicked the fast upgrade button a number of times because I didn't want to wait for boosters. Wish they would buff rescue and give her minus one power.
I pulled Captain Marvel a week ago. I was playing a little bit of your Rescue to the Marvel deck for February. It was fun. Yeah, we can revisit that one. We'll start with Untap, but we might might deck deck for Bash Jeff a little bit. Seriously, Swordmaster? Where's the t-shirt design segment? Shirt's actually for one of my sponsors. They do a bunch of great stuff. That's fine. It's about time to stand up. We can show off the dad bot and the wonderful lion. This is an anti-highlight reel, yeah. These are, whenever you see a, a hella deck posted on YouTube, these are what all the games that got left on the cutting room floor look like. We played Shuri to Surf. Yeah, we played a couple of Shuri decks and they were they weren't very exciting. Anti highlights, you be low lights, yeah, something like that. Whoa! There's numbers on that one. Quake? I don't know that I can be a this isn't real, right? The fuck is this? One cube in 340 games? I have to play that, right? I mean, 340 games is... It's not large, but it's also not small. Are all those games post-infinite? That changes a little. Yeah, most of them. Wow, if you look at post infinite, it actually goes up. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm down to drag the average down. Hey, what is it gonna do? Is it gonna be worse than Hella? Threaten me with a good time. We might get some Jeff boosters by accident. There's a way to see upcoming tournaments. There's no official tournaments for Marvel stat. There's just a lot of like piecemeal community stuff. I actually don't know if there's a site that organizes it all together. A lot of it just seems to be like random discords and Twitter and stuff. I don't know. I don't really have an interest in playing in staff tournaments. So I don't really keep track of any of it. Yeah, no wave is an interesting call out here. This deck does is a little doom wave esque with the she hulk and stuff. I guess you're looking to play Captain Marvel on five a lot of the time. Would make sense for the no wave. Stegrod is out. No. All right, hold on. There's not a steak run in my shop. You're going to eat in 10 minutes here. I'm going to go check it out. Ch -ch -ch me. Get bonked. 
Phil Botville. Thanks for the third of the year. Uh, yeah, links are enabled in chat, but I don't, uh, I'll always click on that. If you have a good Marvel list, I might click on it right now because I'm looking for a Marvel list, but. Why is Jeff have seven hours? We don't actually know. So we're tr I'm trying to find clarity on if the new card releases in six hours now or if it doesn't happen until tomorrow sometime. They haven't they haven't shared. I asked I asked, but I've not been answered. Okay, I think I soak and then we She-Hulk plus something else next turn, right? Probably Shang-Chi. Undefeated. No, the Stagron out um, was not, was a false positive. Someone in Twitch chat, be in Twitch chat. Earliest it should be out is like eight hours from now, but probably not till tomorrow. Storm Shuri's lab here. Really? Daredevil into Phil on three. Oh, they're Thanos. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, Reality Stone happening here is actually quite good for us. Because it means that, um, oh, and that's great for us as well. I snapped the back now, right? With the Juggernaut draw. Because they're kind of locked in the middle. I guess they could time stone the flooding here. But if they don't time stone the flooding, they're locked in the middle. They could be a Killmonger deck. That's true. They go free card, Professor X. Yeah, sure. Sweet. Okay. I'm trying to envision a way in which they win this game from here. I don't. I don't think they can. Right.
Because nowhere, nowhere has them locked out, right? Like all of all of their cards that let them open this up or get into the flooded, it, it gets shut down by nowhere. All right, Chad, I mean, this deck had cracked stats. I mean, you can kind of tell how many good cards are in a deck by how many inks I have in a deck when we load it up. There's a lot of inks in here. If you like Elsa chat, just let it flow. Kind of unfortunate because it means that they're probably a deck with Doctor Doom that can cheat extra power into this flooding. So I, rather than Juggernauting here, I'm just going to play the Panther out. Because expecting them to be able to put more stats in the flooding after the fact. The cards I can play here are very good. I think we're just passing and soaking for She-Hulk. He see sued them. <laughs> it's called Good Marvel, so it must be good. I mean, I didn't name it Bad Marvel. Do you ever consider getting the green border on your Doom? I think when they inevitably let us pick the borders on our cards, I might. I wouldn't experiment with that, but I think for the time, the time being, I want all my inks to stay inked. Okay, well now, now we quake the super flow and have a chance for, a chance for them to no longer have it, right? Never lucky. How, am, how are you below rank 105? Well, you see, if you win too much in Marvel Snap, the reward for winning a bunch is you only queue into bots. So the incentive to spend a lot of time winning in Marvel Snap is not only non-existent, but it's actively detrimental to you.
Now I goose soak three. So we could She-Hulk here next turn. We hope that this is we hope that they just like don't have anything cheap to play into goose. Obviously we lose to death here. You could tell I was enjoying this deck because I got the wind kicked out of my sails when Galactus showed up. Super flows her own personal feature location for the afternoon, though. Could have Shang Chied. Goose has got to be the number one fucking card that Twitch chat just like confidently suggests I fucked up when they don't understand is in play. Numero, numero uno for cards people fail to look at on the board. All right, we'll storm the Nova Roma. We can jug it next turn. Is Jeff only playable on your side? Yes. Hey, Panda. Thank you for the over three years. Welcome back. Appreciate the prime. They already used the reality stone, so we should be good to go on the flooding. Victory. What do you think, chat? Will we get the last six Captain Marvel boosters we need before I have to go at three o'clock? Could go, could go either way. Nope. Fur baby. Fur baby is a good take. Is there a way to hide chat on the screen on the iPad so I can have a full screen? Yeah, if you tap the lower left hand corner, there should be a little chat icon you can click to toggle it. Uh, I think spending tokens on Teenage Warhead is loose. I think spending tokens on Jeff is a very good and reasonable decision. Is that bad for us? 
I think that's actually bad for us, right? Because they just get to Galactus the middle now? We're just, we're just letting him take a turn because I need six Captain Marvel boosters, not, not five. Quake again, so maybe they can't play. Quake only triggers if you play her in the very center. That list looks all right. I don't know why Vision is there necessarily. You, pro you probably want Nightcrawler for Miles. You only have two Miles enablers. I do, I do enjoy Miles Morales though. Yes, Quake is fully random. Damn it, Iceman. Nah, I think Carol's just worse than Vision in the Lockthorn deck, Socio. I don't think you have room to play both. So, I think Quake and Crystal needing to be played in the middle is supposed to be a power level increase for those cards to give you flexibility to play them out without triggering them if you don't want to trigger their abilities. But on, on average, yeah, it's not great. Hey, Chandro, thank you for the five months. Yeah, the locations can't end up back in the spot they were already in. They will go. They will go to new locations. That is that is accurate. do this. I guess this doesn't work for us if they're beating us without my stats. Oh gosh. Damn it, Scarlet. Fucking Wanda chat. play center though, right? Is this fine? Does this actually work out okay? I think this works out okay. We're gonna win, Copium. Got him. Got him. Our deck's too busted to lose, chat. Victory. Marvel boosters? Never lucky rubber ducky.
The only thing this deck can't do is generate Carol boosters. Eternal mood. I mean, well, Wind aid my sure, sure. Oh, we're about to die to Galactus again, aren't we? Little late, Goose. Little late. Hey, death be daddy. What's going on, sneak in. Thanks for the five months, by the way. Afternoon. I think we're dead at this point. I mostly just playing some cards here so we can collect one more one more booster before we retreat Escape. you get one booster per turn your game lasted if we play till six turns we get the old six booster runies What's chat hoping for in the OTA updates on Thursday? We have we have Stegron coming tomorrow, but I think I think the real news this week is uh is the OTA update. Stegron is just like a like a B B minus card. Sabertooth. Okay, Crystal. Crystal's a good shout. 
Underappreciated. 4-4 four, four Electro. Yes. In. Make Electro a 5. That. Electro. Please make Electro a 5 cost is aggressive. I'm not saying you're wrong, and I appreciate you, but it's aggressive. Yeah, it's only numbers on cards. I, I honestly, I don't really know that there's many numbers nerfs that I want. I hope they buff some shit. I hope, uh, I hope Nimrod gets a buff. There's my, there's my call for thing I would most like to see. Give me, give me, give me a Nimrod buff. All right, we need this to go mid chat. We're gambling a little bit here. Okay, and now because that went mid, we have priority and I get to go Agent Miles Morales Teenage Warhead here. Excuse me? Whoa! Get fucking juked. Oh, we do. We do. They had Heimdall too, didn't we? In my in my brain, this Heimdall uh, was from District X. My brain. My brain was bad. My brain was like, oh, we generate a random card. There's two District Xs in play. They deserve. They deserve that one. All of all of those cubes are theirs. Wrong guy. I, I hope they go through some of the four drops and turn them into three drops. Dazzler, strong guy, Shauna. All the guardians suck. They could buff some of them with the new, the new season coming. Yeah, that's true. I can see that. Uh, Gamora, Gamora is super playable, and I think Rocket Raccoon's good enough. All of all of the non Gamora, non Rocket ones are on the on the weak side for sure. Yeah, Gamora, Gamora is aggressively okay. I think she's actually better than aggressively okay. I think Gamora is like actively good in a number of spots. Yeah, Groot's not on the list of good ones. The Guardians mechanic is okay or does it need to work? So, something that's interesting is that Nebula coming out works well with the Guardian cards. Now, is she enough to make the Guardians playable? I don't know. But the Guardians as a card type will get better with the addition of Nebula to the game. I think it's something that's worth consideration. That's fun. It's like spreading out the love here then. Let's do it. Higher, further, faster, baby.
We wish there was more synergy between Marvel teams. I think having synergy between entire teams would be a little bit too cumbersome, but I like that they get some small synergy between cards that are related sometimes, like Moon Girl and Devil Dino having synergy together, for example. Is there a balance up for Teenage Warhead in this list? Yeah, whatever sparks joy. I don't know that this deck is too particularly serious. I mean, all the decks we play on this stream are serious. This is a very serious stream. Okay, uh, I think we goose the Nexus, and then we soak like a Utah teen into She-Hulk here on the last turn. Ooh, rip. Okay. It might just be soak, soak, soak now, right? Chat, if you didn't get that reference, don't Google it on a work computer. Too late. <laughs> uh, are we dead here? It feels like we're dead here. I believe, I believe in Sunspot. I think we've died. Rip. Really, really good debris for the opponent here. I don't need goose boosters. I need Captain Marvel boosters, chat. Uh, the people asked about quaking that last game. Quake is super limited and can only only move location when she's played center. I couldn't quake mid, it was stormed. Methodist. Was it, was it an option? We have to leave after they, they got to Adelaide with negative, unfortunately. What's going on, Bronco? Thanks for the brand new Prime. Appreciate that. And Prometheus, thank you for the quarter of a year. My 1369th Shang-Chi booster. Boy golly, gonna take that one all the way to the bank. I have it pinned over the chat, but just to plug it verbally again today. If you missed it, my video for my Daily Marvel Snap video is a breakdown of all of the upcoming data mined bundles that will be likely releasing in June and May. I give a breakdown in that video of not only what they contain, but also talk through which are the best ones to consider using your resources on, depending on what you're looking to spend. They were getting a Hearthstone. I played Hearthstone for a couple of seasons casually, but the deck building in Hearthstone tends to be really shallow and it just didn't hold my interest. It's actually one of the things that I was kind of pleasantly surprised about when I started playing Marvel Snap is the deck building depth in this game is surprisingly deep. 
And a big a big part of that is how impactful your decisions feel. Like with a with a 12 card deck that you see 75% of every game, every card you put in your deck really matters. Okay, with the hood here, I'm gonna jug on the right, I think. In case we're trying to like beast or something on the hood. Hey, Silvestro, thank you for the almost two and a half years. Welcome back. When am I opening reserves? I'll open my reserves tomorrow on stream. When, uh, when the what's it called drops on the new card releases. Yeah, I need to see what the retention metrics are, Infography. I'm willing to bet I'm going to lose a lot of people during even the quick two-minute cosmetic highlight. So I haven't I haven't done that before in those videos. In the past, I just skipped over showing the variants altogether. If the, if the retention through the end is reasonable, I'll probably make a point to show more. I don't I, I don't have retention numbers yet info. It takes uh it takes for reference it takes a couple of days to populate retention numbers on YouTube. So if I look and the retention numbers for the cosmetic part are good, I'll spend some more time on it next time. Beardsley, thank you for the third of a year. Welcome back. Victory. Appreciate the tree fitty. We did it before three o'clock, chat. We did it before three o'clock. All right, I think this is only my fourth split on her. So at the at the very least, we will hopefully, at the very least, we will hopefully get rid of the green particles. We can we can get inked. Yeah, so the way splits work, I have one split on the base art, and this will be my third split on the variant. So this this split can be inked, but it can't be gold or have Kirby Crackle. So for if we're running hot, this will be inked with a good a good finish. The white border's not bad. Not inked though. That would have been a great border for it to be inked. But alas, we'll have to work our way back up to 155 boosties to, to try again. Could you hoard tokens for high evolution? If you have zero tokens today, you will be able to work your way back up to 6,000 tokens by the end of next month. Completely, completely free to play players get approximately 6,000 tokens a month. There, thereabouts, a little more than that, actually, with the uh, Token Tuesdays now. I think we're just gonna chill on this deck until, until three o'clock when I gotta go. Only 20 minutes left, so. Farm a few more Carol boosters on our way out the door. What is inked? Inked is, this is an inked card where there's no, it's monochromatic other than the text in the border. It's, uh, another one. Wait, so if I do this, it's gone by the time she gets here and if this flips to wherever they're playing cards, they'll get rocks, right? There's Pokemon TCG have Galactus. It does not. Oh, well, that's a sick beat. Thanks, Quake. Uh, the Quinjet is not a bot split. I don't believe there are any bot decks playing Quinjet currently, if I recall correctly.
think we're just soaking on the sunspot again. For people wondering why I'm not playing other cards out with Galactus here, it's because he doesn't work that way. Rip. This card used to be fun when the only way you could get it was off of the raft. It was kind of a sweet card when it was a randomly generated one. Because it gave you situations like this, right? Where like, it wasn't very good because your deck wasn't built to abuse it, but it was like cute and funny. So you want to make sure if you're looking to upgrade a card that you're always at a point where you need boosters for the next level. So long as you need boosters for the next upgrade, that card's twice as likely to get boosters at the end of the game. So by upgrading this to one out of 10, we're a little bit more likely to get Carol boosters when we play games. That yeah, was Raft, Agent 13, and like Nick Fury, right? And like the hub, I think was like the list. And then it's probably like soak on five into She-Hulk in the mid on the last turn. It is worth noting here that Doombot could get us here, but I guess we could play Jeff into the flooding on the last turn too. Seems fine. I'm gonna soak up some sun Gonna tell everyone that she hulks here Are they at Professor X deck? Well, they can't Professor X in the center because Goose is there All systems go I was expecting them to add cards to their hands. They did not, so I believe we are good here, huh? Yeah, nice. They could have even added one card, and we just still been good.
Can you replace Jeff in this deck? Sure. Yeah, Jeff's replaceable in any deck that's not playing Miles Morales. It's so, like, play another good two drop you like. Scorpion, Lizard, etc. Once, especially once Jeff becomes more accessible, it's just going to be like one of the handful of go-to... One of the handful of go-to two drops, just like generically good. What's the cosplay for tonight's card release? I mean, I do have a Godzilla costume we could wear tomorrow. We also don't have confirmation yet if the new card releases tonight at rollover or at some point in the future. Probably a bad matchup for us. They don't care about the goose. They're gonna get to put really big numbers into play. I've goosed myself out of being able to Shang-Chi the middle. Crimson Cosmos might be bad for them though. Want one of these to go mid? Okay. And again, just to reiterate, we cannot Shang-Chi the center because our Goose is symmetrical. We did not know what deck they were playing when I played Goose there. I am Iron Man. I think there is a really good chance that this is the real Mysterio and we are very dead. Hawkeye, 32D, thank you for the brand new Prime. There was a ton of great people here on Twitch you could send that to every month. Thanks for sending it this way this month. They're keeping me around. All right, let's get one more game in here that I got to take off. So we take the kids over to their club. I'll be back uh, tomorrow morning, about 10 a.m. Central again. It's time for Enchantress to come back out and play. Yeah, I think Enchantress is a very reasonable tech card. Enchantress, Rogue, Scrawl. The change, the change of the format definitely opened up a lot of the tech that opened up the tech card slot, basically. It's not just you need to play Shang-Chi or Valk. Hey, Runewalker. Thanks for the quarter of a year. Yeah, Spectrum Destroyer is on my list of decks to give a try to tomorrow. Wind aid my is that deck super solid right now? The end of the sheep. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. What do we think about Sunspot into Soak 4 into Soak 6 into She-Hulk Doctor Doom? Make him down. Down to, down to Clown. Electro version or classic Spectrum Destroyer? I mean, the Electro version is classic Spectrum Destroyer. In my opinion. I suppose I could do this into this into this and then soak three as well. I think I think they're going to play right, right? And if they play two in the middle, Shang-Chi chunks the Angela down too. And I'm going up plus six here up to 18. So I'm tying even if they rock slide.
Swing, bada bada. It's a solid, solid W to end on. Victory. Appreciate your content. As somebody who's played a lot of Hearthstone, I found it incredibly helpful in learning how to approach snap. Awesome, Hawkeye. Good to have you. This deck was, that deck was sweet. I mean, the, the core of this deck it's just like kind of like generically good cards with uh, with like Quake and Friends thrown in, right? Like we've got plenty of location mitigation. I don't know. I don't have any strong opinion. I think you can mix and match some of the cards in here. If you're missing Jeff or Warhead, you could probably replace them with other relatively generically good or tech cards and do fine. R like cards we talk about like Rogue, Scrawl, Enchantress, other good two drops in Jeff slots. Just try and keep the curve roughly the same is probably what I would, would recommend doing if you're looking to try things out. But Doom, Marvel, She-Hulk, these are all good things to be doing along with Sunspot. All right, folks, I'm going to find someone to read here on our way out the door. I'll be back tomorrow morning at about 10 a.m. Central.